Hi, this is Jim Merritt with Quick Trainer Incorporated in beautiful Wilmington, North Carolina, your QuickBooks and accounting experts. So today's video is uh, for a specific client, but I, I think um, a lot of people who might be viewing this could learn from it. And it primarily deals with a preference setting in QuickBooks, Edit Preferences, called Automatically Recall Last Transaction for This Name. I like the way this is set up. This is my preference. And, but I must say, I understand, um, some of the confusion that can happen as a result of this preference setting. So I want to explain, um, how to handle the confusion. I think it's a beautiful, uh, preference setting. And, um, so here we go. So the idea is if I click back a few clicks, we can see here that on one five, um, of 2015, there was a transaction to Home Depot. And these were the line items that were on the receipt that was recorded. So what is happening now, in this particular client, um, they are playing catch up. They are entering old receipts, um, going back to January, and this video is being made in June, um, going back to January. And so when they go to enter, um, say a, a receipt for 114 and they put in the name Home Depot, it is automatically recalling the last transaction for that name and it's confusing the, this person. Okay, so what we can do is, first of all, if we have multiple lines and we just want to get rid of some of them, perhaps there was only one thing purchased at the Home Depot on that specific date of January the 14th. I want you to know that you can hold down the control key and then press the delete key, not the letter D, but the delete key. And you can, all you have to do is click anywhere on this line. It doesn't matter where you are on the line, but control delete deletes an entire line. You can also come up to edit. Okay. Um, delete check. I'm sorry. Delete line. Yeah. Delete line. That will also delete the entire line. Okay. So let's say that on this particular day we bought screws. And we bought three boxes. And they were $14.97 a box. And yes, we want to record this against this particular customer job. All right. Um, but let's say that we also bought something else on this receipt, say materials in now, this is a very generic item. This is the way this customer prefers it. I like keeping it simple. I, and this works for me, but I'll cover another area. If you don't want to be, if you want to be a little more specific, I'll cover that in just a second. And, uh, here we would just put, you know, two by four studs, for instance. Okay. And let's say that we bought, um, 15 of those and they were, $2.97 a piece, and they also went to the ABC job. All right, now what if you also bought some materials, and let's say, again, we bought two by four um, studs, and we bought um, 87 of these at $2.97, but they went to a different job. Let's say that they go to the uh, Michael Jordan job, okay? This is fine too. What this part here is doing combined with these items, it's, it's helping you with job costing. Now this video is not about job costing, but, uh, in this case, this client will know what I'm speaking about. Um, so you're tracking the fact that for the Michael Jordan job, you bought two by four studs, 87 for a total of 258.39 on this date. And that for the ABC job, you bought some two by four studs and you also bought screws. Okay, <clears throat> so I, I do save a new. All right, now this client, they encounter another receipt. And the reason I'm using the word debit there is we're um, pretending like they have a debit card. So if you're not writing a hard check, you use the word debit or DC or just something. And let's say that this transaction took place on 2-1. Again, it was the Home Depot. Okay. So you see how it automatically recalled the last transaction? And now maybe I'm entering a receipt where, where 
there's nothing for this job on there, so I want to delete that line. How do we do that? Control, delete. Okay. And maybe there was this one line, so I delete that line. And uh, maybe on this date we bought some more screws, but we only bought one box. Okay. So all you're doing is, even though it's recalling the last transaction for the name, for, for this name here, even though you're recalling that last transaction, you're just changing now the information as necessary. Okay. Now, what if I wanted to be a little more specific in my items here? And instead of, okay, um, let's see, debit 114 Home Depot. And instead of using this very generic item, I wanted to use the fact that I bought two by fours. Okay, and maybe I bought 114 of those at 257 and they went to the ABC job. And maybe I bought two by sixes. Okay, and I bought 77 of those. And they also went to the ABC job. So I can just keep listing my, my materials here. But every time I, I recall or I enter another transaction from Home Depot, it's going to automatically recall the last transaction. I can delete lines if I don't need them. I can add lines if I do need them. All right. Now let's take another scenario. Let's say that I'm not, let's say I'm writing a check to my electric company. In this case, it's Duke Energy. And so I don't need the job cost Duke Energy because it has nothing to do with the job. So I don't even use the items tab. I come over here and I use the expenses tab. And uh, let's say that I'm paying this online. And I'm paying this online on 127 to Duke energy so you can see the last amount for duke energy was this amount but you look at your bill and go no wait a minute this month it was two it was 214 14 okay you see all i did was change the amount it's pushed to the right account it's got a good memo in there i'm done all right so another month rolls by online and now this one's for two eight two seventeen to duke energy now it's going to remember the last amount, and maybe this month it was to 77.66, 76, sorry. Okay, you can see everything else is ready. It's, you know, I've posted to the electric account. I got a good memo in here, and it's changed the amount. We're done. All right, I hope this helps. I hope it makes sense. If you have any questions, you can feel free to leave a comment. You can also email me at info at quicktrainer.biz, our telephone number 910-338-0488, again 910-338-0488, and we'd love to help you with your QuickBooks uh, issues, it's what we do for a living. Make it a great day.